I'm going to speak about, well, we are busy with this series on restore, restoration, but this is so relevant because we all need what I'm about to speak on. I don't care who you are, how young you are, how old you are, I don't, ma I don't care what, what culture, what nation, it doesn't matter. Why? Because we all need money. We all need finances. Why? Because we are still on earth. We're not in heaven yet. In heaven we'll be walking the streets of gold. How many of you are really looking forward to heaven? Because I do. Wow. But did you see while we are on earth we need to, to pay the rent? Oh, come on, lift your voice. I say we need to pay the rent, water and lights, food, clothing. Mm -hmm. And yet you get people, they criticize preachers who are talking about money. Did you know that the Lord Jesus taught more on money than any other topic? Go and study the Bible. Why? Because money is important. Uh, while we're on earth. All the other topics are important, but don't be like like the Pharisees. Don't be like religious people where they talk against money. And then tomorrow or the day after, you will come to church and you will say, oh, help us, we need money. And I say it straightforward. I will start with the softer word. It's unwise, but now I want to use another word. It's unwise and it is dumb. You understand that word? It's foolish to talk against money. If you're a parent, how many of you would like to care about your children? Come on, and their future. Just be honest. So why do people talk against money? Because most of them are stingy. Because they only live for themselves. Now I want you to see what the word says. In 3 John uh, verse 2, let's talk now this morning about restoration in finances. He says, Beloved, I pray, this is now the Apostle speaking to the congregation, he calls them Beloved, I call you this morning Beloved. He says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Come on, this is the word. It's not anybody's opinion. This is God's holy word. I pray that you may what? Prosper. Come on, say that word out loud. Prosper. prosper. Say it again. Prosper. prosper. Especially when you become a dad or a mom. This word will mean a lot to you. You know why? Because you want the best for your kids. And it costs money. The pampers cost money. Or the huggies. Uh... What about the milk? For, for those who don't have the, you know, the breast milk. What about food? Come on, what about all the bills? I want you to see something. Everything costs money. So you need a revelation on money. God wants us to be blessed, but why? Because He loves us? Yes. And then... He also wants us to be blessed so that we can be a blessing for His church, for His work. You see a beautiful day like this? This is our second service. In the first service it was like conference. Nobody wants to leave. There's so many people here. I want you to invite your neighbors, your friends. We do this for you. Everybody is welcome. But it costs money. Everything costs money. Thousands upon thousands. If you should see the, the numbers, you, you would say, what? To run a church like this. You've got to get a revelation this morning that God wants to restore your finances. But you can't, you can't even talk with me. You can't even pray with me if you're not obedient. And that's the problem. Many people say, Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. But they never become a blessing. When you, when you obey the word of the Lord and you bless the church and you bless 
uh, like we do the poor people and we help people and we evangelize and everything costs money so beloved I pray that you may prosper in all things that's also financial and be in health just as your soul prospers of course it's more important that your soul prospers amen that you are spiritually well but God says this morning I also want you to be healed can you say amen I also want you to be financially well one more time I just have this illustration when you are a daddy like me uh, not only of Jonathan and Kaylee but of many spiritual children you have a heart for people it's my desire that God will bless and prosper you it's my desire that it will go well with you and you need to get to that place where you don't only live come on this is good for yourself because one of these days you're going to leave earth and you will go to heaven and then I must uh, conduct your funeral and then I would like to say wow this guy was a giver or this sister was a giver or she was part of the word and spirit and she won souls and how many of you agree with me but many times we must bury people and then we can't say that we can't say that and then family comes and says pastor please say something nice but that person never gave to the church never brought people never won a soul come on let's talk let's be honest here that's why you will always hear me i thank all our helpers and volunteers and uh, and we have many helpers and i thank you you know who you are everybody that's doing something for jesus doing something for the church so beloved i pray that you will prosper also in money when he says in all things it's also money because all things mean all things say all things, all things. one more time all things. all things when your child comes up to you and he says can i have that chocolate or can i have that ice cream you're a, if you're a good daddy a good father you would feel like yeah yes i want to bless this this boy or this girl with something nice because he's depending on on you and this morning we all depend on god he's our provider come on lift your hand and say it's only by grace it's only by the grace of god whatever we have is only by god's grace that's why we can't boast in ourselves whatever we have this beautiful church is the grace of God beloved I pray that you will prosper tell your neighbor that's also my wish for you come on that you will prosper that God will bless you now 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 please from verse 6 this is very powerful I love this it says but this I say he who so sparingly will also reap sparingly now it's very quiet there. Yeah. I thank God for all the givers at Word and Spirit. There's many. I know our people. Many givers. And please, I want you to get this. This is not about an amount. The tithe is about an amount. It's about 10%. But it's still not about the amount because your tithe can be 100 rand and another guy's tithe can be 100,000 still a tithe because the guy that must give a hundred thousand i mean earns a million a month some of you can't even comprehend, comprehend what i'm talking about here there's so many wealthy people multi-millionaires and we pray that that god will touch their hearts come on and that they will start blessing the work of god how many of you can imagine that your tithe can become so but some of you just say Lord bless me bless me bless me and the Lord says I want to bless through you through you so this is powerful you so sparingly will also reap sparingly and you so bountifully will also reap bountifully so let each one give as he purposes in his heart I want you to see this uh, at word and spirit we don't force anybody 
to do anything? Are you all with me? We don't manipulate people here. We don't like it. Here's my wife. There's many churches, and especially among black churches, they manipulate people. We don't do it here. We love you. We teach you the solid word of God. Can you say amen? We just give you the truth. We will never manipulate you. I want you to see what the scripture says. Okay? Let, let each person purpose in his heart, not grudgingly, or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Now check this out. This is a revelation that I got. In 3 John he says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. And now I want to take it further in 2 Corinthians and I want to say, Beloved, we are still beloved. Beloved, I pray that you will become a cheerful giver. Oh, Pastor oh, Henry, that was a great point. Oh. I pray that you will prosper in all things. See, but now you become quiet. Because you want to prosper, but some of you don't want to give. Now he says, God loves a cheerful giver, but my heart is now beloved. Beloved. You see, I'm still saying this. Beloved, I pray that you will become a... Are you listening? So speak up. That you will become a what? Are you a cheerful giver? So when you give something to your wife or your husband or your child, do you do it cheerfully or do you do it grudgingly? Imagine you have a dad like that. It's time to eat. I mean, that's a necessity. Oh, I must give this child food again. Imagine God works with you like that. No, He says, I wish that you will prosper. And you will hear the Father's heart here. When I look at you, I see God's goodness. I mean, look at how pretty you look this morning. We will never manipulate you here. I want you to understand, we, want, we will always give you the truth. Because there's a lot of manipulation in churches. But God will only bless His Word. He will only bless obedience. Even this morning, an old man came to me. Because some of you don't know what happened in the week. Somebody stole our very expensive camera. Came through the gate when it was ladies' uh, prayer time and the gate was open. And he just walked in. And unfortunately, the church was open. And he just walked in. Everything is on camera. And he stole out that camera. Armand will tell you it's about 70 now, 80,000 rand. A black guy just came in. He has no fear, no respect whatsoever for God's word. Everything's on camera. And I pray that the Lord will save his soul and fill him with his love because otherwise he will pay a very, very high price. But this is the story. And an elderly man came off the service and says, it's not much, but it's something. I want to give this for the camera. <laughs> and I have, I, have, I have tears in my, in my eyes because I know how it works. We are givers. If you know me, we are givers. You can say 100 rand, 80,000 rand. You see, God sees the heart. Yes. This is seed. Not for me. I put it, it's going to the church. If God can trust you with money, you will always have money. But I'm telling you now, some people cannot be trusted with money because if, if I should give you a million this morning, those people, they will waste, it. they won't even bless the church. I want you to think about what I'm teaching now. Can God trust you with money? Can God make you a millionaire? Will you still bring his time? Will you still be in church? Many can't say yes. And that's why I can teach on this with authority because I live it for many, many years. 
If God can get it through you, He can get it to you. But some people, you cannot talk to them about money because then in Afrikaans we say, hulle I don't know how I can say it in Swama or Zulu. Paul, help me. It's when your head becomes noisy. I want to teach everybody here that God wants you to prosper. Also financially, God wants to restore your money. But you must choose to become a giver. Can you say amen? amen. And, and, and if you disobey, don't say bless me, bless me, bless me. And God says, but you, 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 you're a stingy person. You only live for yourself. I told this story this morning. We have about 25 uh, people and, and uh, commitments on the payroll every month. Missionaries, I mean, there's so many things every month, every month, every month. As an assembly, we pay our tithe every month. And then we must pay SARS as well. How many of you have heard about SARS? Because Jesus said, pay what you must pay for SARS. And then pay what you, oh, this is good, what you must pay for God. Jesus said, and then you get people that can't even give a hundred rand for the church, but they want food, they want blessing. Hello. Oh, this is, this is a wonderful place. So he says, you've got to make up your mind. If you're going to sow sparingly, that's what you will reap. When you give, give from out your heart because God loves a cheerful giver. And then I love this. He says, now he who supplies seed to the sower of his thing and bread for food will also supply, check this out, and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched, check this out, in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Every time when you bless God's work, and please understand, look your pastor in the eye. We try to be really real. You know what that saying means? Real people, real people. I don't like fake. I don't like it when, when people manipulate people. What you see is what you get. We love people. That's why I started this service many years ago to accommodate other nations and cultures because that's our heart. We are kingdom people. But we need you to participate. We need you to be obedient. Then you say amen. We need you also to become givers. But every time when you give, Paul says it will bring thanks to God. Please understand. There's my lovely wife. She just moved to the back. I think she want to see how you react. You can ask her. We are the first to bring the Lord's full tithe every month. How about almost 23 years? Did it miss one month? I know what I'm talking about. Millions are flowing through my hands. I don't say that in arrogance. Don't hear it like that. I'm teaching you. God can trust certain leaders, fathers, with money. This is God's work. We've come a long way here. I know what I'm talking about. To run a church like this, Think about what we've done here by the grace of God throughout the years. They wanted to close this church. When we came, I fasted 10 days. And the Lord says, go to Pretoria North and build my church. Uh, this church was in the red, 100,000 rand. I couldn't even get a salary. You want to hear the story? And now we've spent more than eight, almost eight and a half million already just to, to build up everything. And then you get a person, a Chelsea, call him whatever you want. The audacity walk in the in the holy sanctuary and steal God's things. I 
I think it's a wake up call. That's why I want everybody to pray with us that God will provide even better stuff for us, can you Amen. say? So let's be obedient. And would you also become wakey? Because we have a very wonderful uh, track record when it comes to safety by the grace of God. Really, I'm telling you, I can tell you because God knows how I speak to my people all the time. Yes. Keep the things closed. Keep the doors closed. For some people, what you don't even realize, they've been here and they know what's going on. And they know exactly. May the fear of God come on people. You know, you can, you can, you can die by stealing from God. Did you hear what I'm saying? It's not what God wants, it's not what I want. I pray that the Lord will restore your finances. Amen. Come on, I pray that the Lord will bless your family. Say amen. amen. Can you hear the word for you? Can you hear how God speaks to you? But you, you've got to get to a place where you start obeying. I'm just going to give you quickly four important biblical principles concerning finances. And I'm teaching a lot on this, even to pastors and leaders. They're asking, please help us in our church. We can't speak on money because people criticize us. Even Jesus was criticized. I don't care about, you know, I don't care about people criticizing me when I'm speaking the truth. You will stand before God. This is his work. This is his business. You get people. No, don't talk about money. What are you saying? But even in your own house, you have a budget. Let's become obedient. Let's become doers of the word. Four principles. Even the Jew is fanatic about these principles. And let me give it to you. First of all, tithing. Just put it on the board, please. You know tithing is 10% of your income. It's not negotiable. It's not something to argue about. You could have said 80%. You just said 10 Now imagine every person paying his tithe wherever they, they worship, you know, wherever they go to church. Yeah, in word and spirit. Then we will always have more than enough. Amen. Because we, we talk about restoring our finances. You want God to bless you financially? You need to obey His word. It's not, a, it's not my opinion, Paul. I didn't write the, the Bible. It's God's word. Even the other day, some of you don't know, they made a video of me on YouTube. Because I'm doing something right. And this video was, a, was in a negative sense. They criticized me. You get some guys, they are nowhere. He doesn't even have followers. He's, he's a nobody. But he thinks his ministry is to make videos of other pastors and criticize them. Yeah, did you know there's people like that? They're doing videos and criticizing preachers. Get a life. It's because they don't have a ministry. No anointing, and now you want to attack the men of God. God will deal with him. I don't have to. You can ask my wife. We bless our enemies. She was there on the video with me. And now he wants to say, I'm preaching prosperity, and it's not from God. And, huh? What are you smoking? Beloved, I wish that you will prosper in all things. And then he's, he said things about Kenneth Copeland, what a man of God. God gave him a mandate to teach on prosperity. And everybody, well, most people criticize him. He always said, you know, people hate us, but they want what we have. Oh, that was good. That was phenomenal. One more time, I've got to say it again. He says, people hate us, but they really want what we have. If you are jealous, you don't even know, but you become nasty. 
Jealousy makes you nasty. If you know us, first of all, Paul and all these beautiful ladies that, that gave those kind words, you know what I do? Can I, can I tell you what I do? Can I teach you? All these leaders, listen up. You know what I do? When somebody gives me a compliment, of God spoke to me about this, I've, I've, I've been doing this for many years, I will put those compliments at his feet. I love what, what uh, Bill Johnson says. Man, I love that guy. What he can teach. He says, if you live by the praises of men, you will die by their criticism. I don't live by the praises of men. I thank God for honor because it's His will that we will honor our father and mother. Can you say amen? amen. It's His will that we will honor one another. We honor the anointing. Come on, somebody. We honor His work. But I will always put those compliments at his feet and say Jesus to you be the glory Amen. because you get people one day they honor you and the next day they curse you just love people anyway back to that guy I don't know even what's his name and he spoke on Kenneth Copeland and then on Henry Wilson and I told my wife I said wow He's even putting me here next to Kenneth Copeland. Wow, what a compliment. <laughs> you know, some people are crazy. Start winning souls for Jesus, man. Go and start talking to people about Jesus. Instead of criticizing, never criticize men of God. You will pay a very high price. And, and if you know me, you should, you should be knowing me now by this time. I, I've come a long way here. We only teach the Word of God. And I teach this Word this morning because God wants to restore your life. He wants to restore your finances. Say Amen. amen. Take it. Alright, four principles. Tithing, sowing. He says, I want to increase your what? Your seed. Because when you sow, you get a harvest. Interesting enough, he didn't say increase the bread. Because most people, when they get some seed, they eat the seed. Ah, this is the good. You get something, you eat it up. And the Lord says, but I want to give you seed to sow so that you can get a harvest. So yes, a, as a wonderful uh, revelation, start praying that God will give you more seed. <laughs> Some of you just pray for bread. Just give me a bread. And you take the bread and it's a day by day thing. And God says, I want to teach you how to sow. And as you start sowing, as you get seed, you will get way more bread. Come on. Amen. Tithing, sowing. Third principle, saving. Like a Joseph. You need to save money. You can't just spend money. God will always raise up Josephs in the church, in families. I know what I'm talking about. I feel like one of God's Josephs as well. One of God's Davids. One of God's Samuels. Even when the church, not only were in spirit, but the church gone through a tough time after COVID. Because there's a Joseph, because we've been saving money as well, thank God we can just keep on going, say Amen. It's only God's grace. But if you don't are like a Joseph and you just spend and you never save, what, what are you going to do when tough times come? Giving you powerful stuff. People are paying a lot of money to go and sit and listen to this teaching in courses. Tithing, sowing, saving, and the fourth one, very important, stewardship. How do you look after what God has blessed you with? That's what we've been doing here for 22 and a half years, stewardship. It's God's money, it's God's house, it's God's people. You can ask my wife how I work with money. Stewardship. 
Can God trust you with money? Can God trust you even with your family? Come on, I'm speaking to many. How do you look after yourself, your own body? How do you look to the salary that God blessed you? Or are you just moaning and saying, oh, this is, this is not much, and you're actually cursing your money? This is a wonderful revelation that the Lord spoke to me this morning. Tell the people to start blessing their money. Don't say, oh, I only get this and I only get that and the money is gone with my salary. You speak it all the time. That's what's coming out of your mouth. Instead of start blessing your money, blessing your salary and saying, actually, it's God's. And the tithe is not your tithe, it's God's tithe. And some people get increases and they get good salaries and they can't even give give 10% to the church. You know who you are. I get wives, they say, Pastor, my husband is so stingy, can't even pay the Lord's time. Now you must you must be under that roof where there's actually it's a curse. How many of you want God's blessing on your life? Come on. You want God to bless you financially. Beloved, I pray that you will prosper in all things. Come on, say this with me. Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Financially. You know, when we see new cars here all the time, I'm the first to go check the car. Hey, I like cars. Let me bless this car. When people buy houses, I'm the first. Let me come and bless your house. All the time. Normally, it's people who are givers having that attitude. If you're not a giver, you won't understand. If you're a stingy person, you won't understand. Stingy people always criticizing other people. They become jealous. Givers are, hey, I'm so happy for you. New car, new house. Wow, new wife. Happy wife, happy life. What about a happy husband? Hmm? The men are outnumbered here. Lord, help us. Did you enjoy the work? Did you enjoy the teaching? You see how, how powerful it is? How solid it is? Just word. Word and spirit. Word. I will never allow somebody here who doesn't speak the word. Word. Now let's pray that the Lord will restore all our precious people. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray restoration in finances, and I pray for families, and I pray that people will start obeying your word, and that they will enjoy the harvest, that they will start enjoying the blessings. I thank you for this word, and we know you will confirm it by miracles, signs, and wonders in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's bless God's word this morning.